Now suppose the FAA asks you to figure out what indicated airspeed you'll need in order to cross a fix at a certain time. Now, that may seem like kind of an odd question, but interestingly enough, it's similar to the procedure the military uses for determining their time over target. The FAA will tell you that you're on a cross-country flight. You crossed point A at 1500, and you expect to arrive at point B at 1530, and they give you the following information. The distance between points A and B is 70 nautical miles. Your forecast wind is 310 degrees at 15 knots. Your pressure altitude is 8,000 feet. Your temperature is minus 10 degrees C, and your true course is 270 degrees. So what indicated airspeed would be required to reach point B on time? Well, you would need to break this question into three parts. First, you need to find the ground speed that's required. Second, you need to find the true airspeed that will be required. And third, last, you need to find the indicated airspeed that will be required. Here's the first step. You know that you need to cover 70 nautical miles, the distance from A to B, in 30 minutes, which is the time between 1500 and 1530. So go to your flight computer, and on the front side of the flight computer, look around the outer scale. The outer scale is for distance until you find 70 nautical miles on the outer scale. Then rotate the inner scale, the inner scale is for time, until 30 minutes on the inner scale is underneath next to 70 miles on the outer scale. Then look around the inside scale of the flight computer until you find the 60 minute index. And when you find the 60 minute index on the inner scale, opposite on the outer scale will be the ground speed required. You add a zero to what you see there, it's 140 knots ground speed. And that's pretty logical, because if you need to cover 70 miles in 30 minutes, in 60 minutes, which is twice that long, you'll need to cover twice the distance, or 140 nautical miles. Now let's go to the wind side. The second step is to find the true airspeed. So on the wind side of the flight computer, we're going to mark the wind we were given, which is 310 degrees at 15 knots. So rotate the clear plastic disc until the wind direction of 310 degrees is underneath the true index up at the top. Then take a look at the center of the clear plastic disc and find the grommet. Once you've found the grommet, move the inner slide up or down as you need to so that the center grommet is on 100 as a handy starting reference point. With that center grommet on 100, what we're going to do is mark the wind speed up 15 knots from that center grommet. So here's 100, 110, and this arc right here is 115, so we'll put an X there, and that will mark our wind speed at 15 knots. Now that our wind X is on there, we want to rotate the disc to put our true course, 270 degrees, underneath the index up at the top. And once we get 270, our true course, under the true index up at the top, then we're going to go put our ground speed under the grommet. The G's go together, ground speed and grommet. So look back at the grommet and move the slide so the grommet is on the arc for our ground speed of 140 knots. Now once we've got it there, the X will be sitting on the arc that represents our true airspeed. So here's 140, 150, 151, 152. We need a true airspeed of 152 knots. Now that we know the true airspeed that will be required, the third and last step is to convert that to the required indicated airspeed. 
To do that, go back to the front side of the flight computer. And in the airspeed correction window, find your temperature, which is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then rotate that inner dial until you have that temperature set opposite your pressure altitude, which is 8,000 feet. So with minus 10 degrees C set opposite 8,000 feet in the airspeed correction window, now look on the outer scale of the computer to find the required true airspeed of 152 knots. And here it is right here. Here's 150, 152. Once you find 152 knots on the outer scale, that's our true airspeed, take a look on the inner scale, which will be our calibrated airspeed. And you'll find that your calibrated airspeed is 137 knots. That's what we're going to need. Now the difference between calibrated airspeed and indicated airspeed is instrument error and also position error in the pitot-static system. But since the FAA does not give you information in this question to convert the calibrated airspeed into indicated airspeed, we're going to have to assume that they're the same. So the required indicated airspeed to cross point B on schedule is 137 knots. So to recap, when you're trying to figure out the required indicated airspeed to cross a fix at a certain time, you need to break the question into three parts. First, find the ground speed that's required. Second, find the true airspeed that's required. And third, find the indicated airspeed required. As you can see, wind problems are a little bit time consuming. So when you get to the test, I recommend that you leave them for the very end. That way you'll be comfortable and relaxed and you'll know that you've plenty of time to do them in a relaxed manner. But now you're ready for the fun part of cross-country flying.